Hey, kids. So, we're not going to look at my ugly mug for very long. Just want to say hey. So, we're going to do sheet two today, which is going to be a lot of measuring. And so, I've switched to the um, Surface Pro so I can do the camera in front of it. And kind of hold things up as if we were in the classroom and you could see the up close and personals of that. So, without further ado, let's swap it around and let's bring up sheet two which is right here so we'll be working through this here okay all parts should be moved from the block check all parts should be cleaned with solvent check uh so we're going to inspect with a straight edge, straight edge and feeler gauge the cylinder head to make sure it is straight and the gasket surface is not deeply pitted four thousandths max okay I uh, will get that ready to go for a second. Oops, where are we at? Come back. Come back, dummy. Come back. Come back. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this flat straight edge. Now, you can buy fancy straight edges for like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And what, the, what they will do is they will give you a... Um, a better resolution. They're like solid steel stuff. Um, and if you were building real engines like, you know, like, well, like our other big engine we have torn apart, that's what you would use. For the purposes of this engine, the fact that, you know, you can't really kill a Briggs and Stratton engine, um, this is good enough. So this is a four thousandths feeler gauge. So we're going to try to jam this underneath of this straight edge. Okay, now this is tricky to do. So you got to be right on the flat part of the head where the actual gasket sits. And if you're on there and you can jam this underneath of it, then you have a problem with being not flat enough. Okay. Now, because this is aluminum and because, as I say, you can't really kill one of these guys, um, what we're looking for, again, is see if you can slide this underneath it anywhere. Um, it's also a very short head. That is, it's not very long from end to end. So you're not going to see a lot of wows in it. Okay. Um, the other engine, uh, it's long enough. It's, you know, almost two feet, what is it, probably two foot long head, just about. And, um, you could see some considerable wowing from one end to the other on that thing, which would affect it, the head gasket's ability to seal. And as a result, you could have a bad head gasket seal, which would be a function just like having a blown head gasket, which would be no bueno. Um, so that's our first step on sheet two so if you come back in here sheet two so we did check inspect the valve seats are they pitted are they loose in the block well allow me to demonstrate what that looks like friends so everything is just a scotch oily and so when you touch it your computer gets oily all right so down in there oh good lord i'm having a seizure all right so, right along in here, this that piece right there where it's gleaming. Do you see? Well, you can't really see where it's gleaming. Sorry. In real life, it looks like it's gleaming. Right here where it's kind of gleamy, silvery. There is a edge around there that's cut at about a 30 to 45 degree angle. This one right there, and I wish I could show it better to you. Maybe just pure light will show it better. And this little pointer... Right in there, I see some garbage on that lip. So we're going to be polishing these up on that's the exhaust seat. The intake seat, you can see this rim right there where just above that black part, that shiny part right there, that's the actual valve seat. That's where they sit. So the black, the, uh, the exhaust one looks a little carboned up, and as a result, it may not have been seating 100%, but the intake looks good. Okay. Now, loose in the block. Now, right here where this black part is, from there up, that part will actually pop out of here. It can. These are tight. And very seldom will you see them fall out. What you do to get them out is heat up the block. If you heated the block up, you could actually get that seat out and change them. In the old days, um, people would actually, you know, rebuild things. Because things didn't cost a fortune back then. When I was in high school, we had to buy all the parts and we had all the tools to rebuild them, which is great. But, and it costs like, I don't know, 10 bucks. Now it would be like 
hundreds of dollars to rebuild one of these engines from start to finish with bushings and repair everything. It's just silly. So anyway, as far as polishing up the seats go, we will be uh, doing what is called um, lapping the valves. And I'll show you how that process goes in a few days. There are a few different videos from now. So just stick tight. Be aware of that. That's what's going to happen to us as we go along. Uh, oh, shoot. So I'm going to look at each valve now individually. <coughs> Oh, just a minute. The Napa guy's here. One moment, please. All right, I'm back. So, I have for our perusal one of the two valves. Let me show it to you. Voila. Okay. Now you're like, Mr. Green, which valve is it? Can you tell just by looking? Yeah, I can. But let's look at the seat of it. This is the valve face right here where the shiny part is. That is what makes contact with the shiny part of the valve seat. Okay. So, this is the valve stem. This is the valve seat, right? Or the valve face, rather, right across here that sits on the valve seat. Okay, this is the head of the valve. Okay. Now, the most important part of this, okay, obviously, if these stems get worn, you will get oil past it. That oil will get up and get burned. That's no bueno. We don't care for that much. Okay, so we're going to check that out, see how those feel. If you feel it, man, there's no wear on this one at all. Okay. Now, uh, that's just the feel of it. I'm just feeling, do I feel, do they feel scored or scratched? No, they feel perfectly smooth. As far as the face goes, it could stand a little work. So we're going to do, again, what's called valve lapping. What we do is put a little compound on this. It has some grit in it. And then we set it back in the head. And then we, and we turn that grit between the two surfaces. And what it does is it makes the two surfaces mate together perfectly again. Okay. Right, Mr. Graham, you didn't tell us which head, which which valve it was. Well, let's see which one it drops into. Oh, it's the exhaust valve. Again, you'd have to be an idiot to mix them up because they're completely different sizes. Okay, so there's that. Let's get the intake up here. Take a peek at him. Oh, you'll notice that the top is, again, fairly carboned up, which matches what we saw when we took it apart, of course. Um, Okay. All right. Here's the other valve. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Mr. Groom. Mr. Groom has not had his coffee this morning. Notice that that does not fit. So the one I showed you before was the intake. This one is the exhaust. Let's see how it matches up. See how it sits in there better? Mr. Groom needs more coffee. We need more coffee. Maybe we need to quit working today and just go get more coffee. All right, so as you look at this guy, clearly it is nice and carboned up. Again, you can't really see the defined valve face right there. There's not really a shiny part of it. So when we lap that up, that'll sit nice and smooth. Again, this, the stem itself feels pretty good right there. There's a little bit of a ridge. It feels like just carbon. So when we go to clean this valve up, we'll go over and run it on the wire wheel and knock that little bit of carbon off of it right there. Aside from that, everything else feels pretty good. Okay. Set that baby off to the side. Oop. Look what you're doing, dummy. All right. Now, what do they want us to do next? Let's look at our sheet, shall we? Okay. Mm all right, cool. So faces warped, burnt. No, no, they're just dirty a little bit, a little carboned up. Valve stems, scorter scratch. Nope, they feel good. Now, there's a cool tool to measure the holes. Oops, you can't see that. To measure the holes where the valves go down through there. They go through those holes down there. We're going to measure those. So to read, those are called the valve guides. So to measure them, there is this cool little tool right here. It's this fella. And this flat end right here, if it goes in up to right here where it ceases to be flat, your valve seat is no good, or your valve guide is no good anymore. Okay? So, I stick it in. Oh, it won't go in, Mr. Groom. Well, that's good. You know what that means? It's not worn out, friends. Hey, it won't go into that one either. It just barely starts. The, our valve guides are just fine. This is a pass, no pass test. 
if this didn't pass, what would you do, Mr. Graham? I'd put it back together and forget about it because this is just an engine to play with. Um, if it were a situation where I would, uh, this was, you know, I really cared about this lawnmower never smoking again, then I would take and rebuild them, okay? Uh, inside of this one, I don't know if you can see it, it's really hard to tell. Down here, maybe that's helpful. Well, my hand wasn't in the way. Well, ah! See that black rubber thing in there? This one has been drilled out. They put a brass insert with a rubber ring in it. That's been that's not factory. That is after the fact. Um, at some point, this intake this was taken apart, which is mind blowing to me. And someone put a bushing in there. Okay, that's just mind blowing. Being that this is not that old of a mower, and rarely do things get taken apart and fixed anymore in our day and age. Okay, uh, they're both good there. Now we want to measure our valve stems. Okay, so this is a this is the intake, so we're going to pay attention to that guy. So, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to write intake. That is not for you. Quit looking at that. That's weird. Okay. So, intake stem. So, here's my valve. And here's my stem. I like so. And we're going to measure the diameter of it. Now these are supposed to be quarter inch stems. So I'm going to use a mic like we've used in class. This is, by the way, why we learned about them. Is to be able to do measurements like this. So I'm going to place it on there like so. And then I'm going to, again, grab the clutch up here and come down and tighten it until it quits going. I was holding the other piece of it there. That's pretty sweet. So if you look on there, we have 0.2 and then 2.5 and then 22 more. So that's point, what is that now? 247 thousandths as opposed to 250 thousandths. Okay? So we're about three thousandths shy. Okay? Now that is for the intake. Now, interestingly enough, what we're going to look at is we're going to find, hey, what is the, we're going to find what is the, uh, what is our clearance in that hole, okay? So to do that, again, that was the intake. I'm going to take one of my inside hole gauges, this one in particular. You'll recall these guys. And we screw it in and it splays out remember that so it's gonna be hard for you to see this i'm gonna stick in the hole there i'm gonna pull it out until i feel oh did one of my freshmen not put this in the right case mm. oh okay this one is a little screwed up apparently yeah one moment please while i go fetch up a good one All right, so I stuck it in off camera there. I put it back in, and I'm getting 249 thousandths for the hole that it goes into. Okay, so the valve guide, which is the hole that it slides into, the guide, obviously the hole has to be bigger than the stem going into it. This, this has about a 0.249 is what it's measuring. That means we have a clearance of 0 0.002, which I'd prefer you said as two thousandths. Okay, that's how that's gonna go. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing with the exhaust. Okay, and we're gonna see how that plays out here as well. So I think I'll just measure them, uh, we'll measure them off camera, I think. So we don't have this thing going all day. Interestingly enough, they were exactly the same. So once again, our clearance, that is, it's always hole minus what goes in the hole, 0 0.002. Please never, ever tell me, for instance, that the piston is bigger than the cylinder. That's ludicrous. Don't ever tell me that, uh, I can't even think of an example now, 
Don't tell me that something that has to go into something else is bigger than what has to go into. That's ludicrous. Okay. So we are now going to then turn our attention to, oops, back to this worksheet here. Okay. And we are on sheet number or part number two of it. So we use the whole gauge. We did all that. There's our clearances. Cool. But if you look back on page this, it says go to the overhaul manual, page six, section six. So that's at St. Helens High School. G Well, for Pete's sakes. Helens High School. Teachers. I'm going to make myself a favorite of myself. Won't that be fun? I probably could have just Googled my own name and probably been faster. Huh? Yes, we got it. Guess what, kids? We're not in school anymore. Whoa. Weird. I know, right? Oh, what a cute picture. Briggs and Stratton Repair Manual. There we are. Cool. So, section six, page six. Here we go. If you click on the six, it is a clickable link. It should take me right to that section. Give it to me. No, I'm sorry. Wait. No, I'm on the wrong. Okay, never mind. I'm on the right deal for what I was looking about. I was on the wrong page in my mind over here. Page six. You're going to be talking to yourself. There's four. These are the valve guides. You can replace them. That's what I was talking about. And that's how you do it if you're going to do it. And then, oops, page six. Here we go. Page six. Here we are. Nice. Uh huh. Mm hmm. So, yes. See, that's where you know the flat end is marked out right there. Okay. Um, I thought it told us on this page. One moment, please. Anyway, we're fine because we know the our valve stems have not worn out. They are where they normally are. And mainly because of the fact that when we go put that uh, tool in, it did not go into our valve guides. That's how we know we're fine. But I just wanted to have you check that. So um, inspect the surface of the camshaft journals. So the camshaft is over here. The journals, anytime you hear a journal, it's what that thing rides on. So it rides right here, and it rides right here. If you look at them, they're not scored. If you feel them with your fingers, they're nice and smooth. Everything's hunky-dory there. So that is, uh, they're not, they are smooth. That's what they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on section 10, page 4 of the overhaul manual, section 10, page 4, Let's go back over here. Let's go down to section 10. For pity sakes. All right, section 10. Page four. That was page four in there, right? Oh, fart. <laughs> oh, for God's sakes, what am I doing? That was page ten, nine, eight. How did I get down there? Seven. I swear I can run a computer. Five. And page four. Okay, cool. Um, here it is. So, come up here. Check the crankshaft. We're not on a crankshaft. We're checking the cam gear. Inspect the teeth for wear and nicks. Remember, this is plat. Well, you can't see that. It is plastic, um, so just be aware that it could break and crack, but honestly, these things will pretty much run for, you know, ever. Nice. 
So they look, they look nice. There's no chipping, no damage in any way. Okay. And then we're going to measure the two lobes. Now, when this baby goes in, it sits in like so. The closest valve to you is the exhaust. That means this is the exhaust lobe. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure from here to here. We're going to measure that highest number. And then we're going to turn it this way and we're going to measure the base circle. Okay, so I'm going to measure them both with my mic. So, <laughs> oh, nice. It just barely fits, people. Come on, get on there, you hippie. So she looks to be approximately, this is harder than it looks, friend, 0 0.91, we'll call it 915, 0 0.915 for that lobe. And now for the base circle, so remember the lobe. Ah, that's a terrible drawing. So from here to here is the lobe, and then from here to here is the base circle. So basically just turn it 90 degrees from where you had it a minute ago. Okay, so I did. Looks like so. Scroll that baby in there. Oh, get on there, worthless hippie. Uh-huh. Okay, so point seven. And there's our 25. And we know we're just past the 50 because we see a 4. So point seven five four, roughly. <laughs> Okay, and now what they'd like you to do is they want to find what's called the exhaust lift. So when that, remember, as this baby turns around, at some point, ooh, at some point, well, that's terrible. Your push rod is going to be here. Remember this part here, this circle does not move. So we're going to go from here up to a maximum of, again, this is the same height. up to here and the difference between here and here is what we call the lift so to do that we're just going to take these two measurements we found 0 0.915 minus 0 0.754 and we will get 161 right correct 0.161 i better double check that i'm just not feeling it today point 915 thousands 915 thousands minus 754 thousands 0.161 we have 161 thousands of lift okay uh, I'll be doing that just a few minutes as well on our on our other motor our big one we can do the exact same thing but let's do it for the intake now on this engine I happen to know they're supposed to be the same that's not always true for all engines. Sometimes you'll see that the intake, like on a, not on lawnmowers, of course, lawnmowers are not built to be exactly, uh, they're not built to be exactly high performance rigs. So, you're supposed to cut the grass with them, man. You're not supposed to, like, hot rod them. So here we have 0.917, looks like. So it's very similar to what we had on the other one, not surprising. Again, that's on our lobe. On the base circle, we're going to be sitting at 0.749. And... Uh, Hundred sixty-eight thousands. Now, 
I will say this, they're, they should be the same on a Briggs, but look, you'll notice that the, if you had the camera on, Mr. Groom, you'd notice that these lobes, you can kind of see right there, have been worn off considerably. You see that? So they don't wear necessarily exactly the same. Well, you can't see that when it's hiding. And so that's why you're seeing a little bit of a discrepancy. I'm going to grab the cam from the other engine. Now, if you look at these, you can see how that is what a lobe should look like when it's brand new. Nice and pretty pointy. There's a little bit of wear on this. Uh, most of this wear that you see is actually not terribly bad wear. It's mostly the fact that it's had water in this engine and it's not really helped anything. It'd be nice to polish this crank. I'm not going to put a new crank in this engine because I just don't really care that much about it. I'm going to pause us and I will do the measurements off camera for this one and just show them to you. For God's sake. Okay, so here I have it. Um, the data from that other engine there. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest with you, about putting it back in the engine, which is exhaust and which is intake. Um, but suffice to say, they have a clearly different lift. And so you can see, and this is not uncommon, you'll have where the one goes a little higher than the other. So an inch, 628, minus one inch, 353. By the way, the things you'll be answering on your assignment will be things like this. What is the lift? So 275 degrees, or 275 thousandths of an inch of lift on that one. And... <laughs> Two hundred sixty-four inches of lift on that one. Okay, so that's the kind of thing I'll be asking you about on your assignment. Okay, so let's see where are we at here. That clears us up to if you're playing along at home. Oh uh, yes, we're good. Yeah, we've done all of this. What is the lift? Is down here. Got it. Okay, now we want the cam, journal, PTO in, and magneto in. Okay. Uh, oh, step 13. Did we not measure the, the lobes? I guess we did not measure them. Oh, here we go. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and so we'll measure these cam gear and the other end. So on the gear end, it's right here. And I believe they are supposed to be. Oh, I can't know what they're supposed to be. Half inch? I think half inch. Uh, look at that. Like right on the button. Half an inch. Nice. What about the other one? About 506. Let's measure this one again. I'll just. No, oh, 0.5 around the button. Okay, now, it, it is interesting to note that over here on this cam, each one of those cam journals is slightly smaller than the one other one. Okay, so when you look at it, this is the smallest journal on this end, that's the biggest journal. And that's because when you put this cam in, it has to. This one has to pass through every single one of the bearings for each one of the other ones. This one is this one is just slightly bigger than this one. This one's slightly bigger than that one. This one's slightly bigger than this one, and this one's slightly bigger than this one. In fact, if you do it, measure the cam journals here. This one measured it out at uh, one inch. 560 thousandths. You can see that it does not go on here. This front journal measures in at maybe too big for my, maybe not. Oh, just barely. Woo. Measures right in at 
one inch, 998, 90, no, one inch, 992, 997 thousandths. Okay, so quite a bit larger as you go along. Again, that's because this one has to go through everybody's bearing. This one has to go through all of these guys' bearing. This one has to go through those. This one has to pass through this bearing, and this one sits out here on the far end. But the way that the Briggs and Stratton engines put together, this guy just sits in that hole, and then you put the cover on this end, and it just sits in that hole. So we'll be good that way. Okay? So, uh, cam bearing clearance. Now, to have clearance, what would you have to have? Well, you'd have to measure the, what goes into the hole and how big the hole is itself. Okay? Now, this little package of hole gauges only goes up to a half an inch. Well, if I'm telling you right now the shaft measures in at half an inch, this ain't going to be big enough, is it? Okay, so what are we going to use? We're going to use the... And so here is the other kind of hole gauge. Recall, you will loosen this, push these dudes together, tighten this, and then go drop it into the hole. So I'm going to set it in there. It's, I'm going to do it kind of off camera because that's how life is. I heard it tink. I tighten it down. I make sure it may be sitting straight up and down. And then I pull it out, and then I measure it with my mic. Like, Mr. Groom, the mic, which you just had on the cam gear itself on the, uh, on the journal, won't go on. Well, I hope not, because remember, the hole has to be bigger than what it's going into. This reads in at about 0 .509, 508, 508. So, 508 thousandths. 0 .508. Now, notice that that's on the crankcase side. Maybe you want to call that the block side. That's cool. I'm okay with that. Maybe you want to call that the coil side. Ah, come on, dude. You're getting weird. Okay, fine. Now, remember, that is this end of the cam. Because I, make, I made both measurements on the cam. I forgot to write down which one was which. So I'm going to come back and measure this guy. This guy measures in at... Uh, yeah, four ninety nine. No, it's not quite. I'm moving in my hand here. I'm gonna do it off camera here. It's hard to reach over the camera and get it on there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna call it exactly point four nine nine. Okay, that would give us a difference of nine thousandths. That seems like quite a bit. We're going to measure in a minute, or we're going to look up the spec in a minute. We're going to do the same thing with this end, which is, remember, this is referred to as the PTO end. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to take our hole gauge. We're going to hold the ends together. We're going to loosen up, tighten it down again. We're going to stick it in there. I heard it tink. Pull it out. Get our mic on there oh well, mr green it's too small because you were just measuring the journal i know i know i know it's how it goes dude click 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 so 500 and yeah 507 just about 508 okay, and then if i measure and again this is the p-t-o-n you want to call it the cover end, it wouldn't hurt my feelers. Um, and then if I measure this, if you want to call it the cam gear end, you're welcome to do that as well. I mean, it ain't going to hurt my feelings. It's just whatever. So I click down on this guy, and it comes in at, yeah, also right at 499 <laughs> So you have about 8,000 to clearance here. All right, now if you go back onto the online text is right here um, okay so note 20 uh, blah, blah 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 cam girl channels here we go here we go yo I'm gonna pause you while I find the exact spec oops 
So if you see right here, it says table three, number 26, page 26 down here. So let's go down to page 26 in this section. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Here we go. And so, as you know, we have a ten thousand series engine. Okay, and there we are. So that's for the crankshaft. So I must be on the wrong page. I was page twenty-four. That's crankshaft camshaft aha there you go friends so we should reject if we are 498 thousands or smaller and we should if our cam lobe is smaller than that okay i don't remember what our cam lobe measured in at but we're clearly okay on our journals our cam lobes measured in at 0.917 and 0.9 whatever so we have quite a ways to go before we reject our cam our cam is in good shape, okay? Back to here, back to here, back to there, somewhere. Nice. Uh, maximum acceptable cam bearing clearance. Minimum acceptable clearance. Minimum is two, is two thousands. Uh, maximum is, if you come back over here again, let's do this thing. Oops. So, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot where I was at. I was doing some other things here. Um, so, maximum, yeah, somewhere around 10 and 12 is probably too much worn out. There's not an exact one. Ah, uh, it's just a minute. Anyway, so, custodian was just here. So, bad parts, we didn't find any bad parts on this one. Uh, valve guide clearance, that's the difference between how big the hole is for the valve to go into the valve guide and the width of the stem, the valve stem. What happens if the valve guide clearance is too much? You'll get oil past the valves, the stem, the valve past the valve stems. Uh, it'll come up the valve stem, and then it'll get into the into the cylinder and will burn it, which is less than bueno. You'll see blue smoke. If it was too little, it could actually bind on the valve. That would be a problem. Okay, reject size means if it is either the hole is bigger than a certain value, or if it's the valve stem or the cam lobe or the crank lobes. If they're smaller than a certain amount, we're going to pitch them, okay? And then what would the result be if the cam lobe was smaller than the reject size, okay? Well, if the lobe was smaller than the reject size, pitch it, okay? Uh, what would happen if you tried to run it like that? Your engine wouldn't run very well. Think about it. It would be kind of like your engine had asthma or something. It couldn't breathe properly. If you had an exhaust valve that wasn't fully opening, it couldn't spit out all the bad exhaust and it couldn't, wouldn't run very well. If it had a bad intake lobe that was worn too much, what would end up happening is it couldn't breathe in enough air and gas, and it wouldn't run very well. Okay, so that does it for this sheet. Uh, the assignment for this guy will be a few more conceptual questions and then some math, of course, to go with.